forward to about this trip, aside uh, from playing the game? <laughs> besides playing the game, uh, you know, just going over there and kind of being a part of their culture and just kind of see what's over there. I've been to uh, Paris and I watch a lot of Love Island UK. <laughs> So uh, I don't know too much about it besides like some of the lingo and stuff. So I'm, I'm really excited. What's some lingo you know? Uh, I know uh, like uh, cheeky, you know, uh, banter. Um, I don't know. I know. I know some things. If it came up, if we're having a conversation, I know what to say. Where did you learn that from? Was it Fox 11, Ryan Wing? <laughs> Fox 11. Shout out Fox 11 and uh, yeah, and Love Island. So is there anything on your list that you want to see over there, or any sites or things mm, you want to do? Not really. I'm not really much of like a postcard guy. Like I don't need to go to like see the stuff I can look up. More so just like maybe go somewhere, find somewhere local to eat, and kind of I'm more of like figure out where the locals like to go and then go there, like a hole in the wall, something like that. Sadly, you can't hit up any dive bars this time around, but next time. <laughs> when you saw this game was scheduled, were you thinking, Jesus, this is going to be a really fun opportunity, or man, what a distraction right in the middle of the season? Uh, you, definitely, you definitely have to, you know, look at it as an awesome opportunity. Um, you know, it, once it's scheduled, you have to go regardless. So, um, but you definitely look at it on the bright side of it. It's an awesome opportunity to, you know, expand the game of football. Um, play in front of a whole new group of fans and stuff like that and also just kind of have an adventure as a team so I think it's a really cool opportunity. How do you approach the challenge of the travel schedule tonight and the jet lag that you'll have once you're there? Uh, just you know try to get as much sleep as I can on the plane. I know we got practice early in our time over there so just try my best to get some sleep on the plane. Yeah, how much focus does it take to be able to get off the plane and be locked into practice right away? It takes a lot even throughout this week just you know, we've had moderated schedules and different than, you know, the normal weeks. So just even staying on top of stuff now is, you know, a little different, but I think everybody's been handling it well and, you know, doing everything they need to do. You soaked in the soccer game here. How excited are you to show off Green Bay Packer football over there? Oh, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I know that the fans over there are going to have a ton of energy, and, uh, you know, I'm excited to get over there. Are there some parallels to that? You know, with the, with the, I mean, there are fans from 50 different states, 20 different countries here for the soccer game. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of international American football fans mm -hmm. over there. What's the parallels to that? Uh, I mean, I've had the chance to watch a couple soccer games, or yeah. when I get over there, I start calling them football. <laughs> um, so I've gotten a chance to see a couple football games. And, uh, you know, I think one thing about it, the coolest thing is that they cheer for, for the soccer games no matter what. Offense, defense, whoever has the ball, they're cheering the entire time. So I think it's going to be kind of cool when we're on offense and we're used to, you know, quieting people down. They're just going to be uh, going. But the energy is always there uh, anytime you watch a soccer game, so it's really cool. What do you see with this Giants team also 3-1? They've got three wins. Yeah. Uh, you know, I see uh, another team that's right on track. Obviously, you know, Saquon's doing his thing over there, running the ball. Got to give uh, credit where it's due, especially with running backs. So you're always looking at guys who are playing at a high level. And then, uh, you know, the defense is really solid. They got a really uh, good uh, front four. Um, they got a really good front seven. And, you know, they got a lot of guys that, you know, make plays and they play really hard and play together. So it's, uh, you know, another game where, we got to minimize the mistakes we uh, we do, and then go ahead and just you know take it one play at a time because it is a good defense we're going up against. You were safe on both came from Northeast colleges. How well do y'all know each other, if at all? I wasn't sure. Yeah, uh, we we know each other. Like I always say, like we know each other pretty well. But it's always like we know somebody through somebody. Like I know one of his best friends. I've hung out with, or I've trained with one of his trainers and things like that. So we've always like crossed paths. He got to the league before I got to the league, kind of something like that. So. Um, but we've communicated over the years and, you know, joked about the quads and stuff like that. We did a uh, interview, uh, a Zoom interview the other day about the quads. Mine are bigger, by the way. Uh, I'll say his are probably faster, but mine are bigger um, with, uh, like, Rob Demosky and uh, those guys at ESPN. So it's good, uh, you know, hopefully uh, get a 26 jersey and bring it back. That'll be cool for the wall. Speaking of the quad rivalry, is, it, is this a week where you kind of decide, okay, who, who takes the edge in the quad rivalry? No, nah, you know, I think, you know, uh, Jay Cole said it best. Uh, two legends can, go, uh, can coexist. So we'll just stay at the top. Maybe we'll add some more to make it like a Mount Rushmore. But the quads, there, there's enough quads for, for two guys. Chris Poole was asked yesterday who Saquon reminds him of, and he said you, but he was like lot faster. Did you yeah. agree with that assessment as you said? Yeah, absolutely. I got probably about 25 pounds on him. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, got the same, same, same lower body, like same quads, but a little different style of play. But, you know, uh, always been a fan of Saquon. Um, growing up, he's always been a couple years older than me. Uh, so it's always been fun to watch him.
what kind of atmosphere do you expect in the stands Sunday morning? Do you think it's going to be like a home game mix? I think it's going to be like a home game with the home game with like uh, no rules. You know, our, I feel like we got some. We I, we always say like we have the best fans of football, but we also have some of the smartest fans. Like they know when to be quiet, they know when to yell and get it going, they know when to you know maybe chirp the defense a little bit. Uh, but I think out there it's just going to be a ton of energy, ton of excitement, but just all the time. Uh, so as on the offensive side of the ball, you know, it's, you, you prepare for stuff like that. But I'm excited. You always feed off the energy of the fans. In terms of this offense, um, you know, heading into week five and some of the inconsistencies we've seen, do you feel like the next three games are kind of a crucial stretch for you guys to start clicking a little more? Yeah, I think, you know, every game, you know, that's kind of, like you said, been the, been the reoccurring theme we've showed. Um, that we can be good, we can win games, um, and you see all these explosive plays. It's just about being consistent. And I think, you know, each week is kind of like, all right, well, this is a week, and I think, you know, this is a great opportunity for us to do that. And so even if we get just 1% better at it or one play better, I think, you know, just as long as we keep that trajectory pointed up by the end of the year, it'll help us get to where we want to be.